welcome to our scene on the antipsychotics. In this scene, we're going to talk about the typical antipsychotics, also known as the first generation antipsychotics, and the atypical antipsychotics, also known as second generation antipsychotics. And as we'll see, it is the atypical antipsychotics which are more often used now, and we'll explain why. But first, let's explain how we'll know that this scene is about antipsychotics at all. We have two men who live side by side over here. And they each found something very similar on their cots. I don't know why their cots are outside, but it works well for us, as we can see clearly what's going on. We see this man over here who has a beard, which reminds us that we're talking about the first generation, as he is older. And he noted that on his cot over here, which generally has ticks on it, so this is the cot of ticks, he discovered an ant, a very normal looking ant. So this is the ant that was found on the cot with ticks. Ant on cot with ticks for antipsychotics. So we know that this side of the scene over here is about the typical first generation antipsychotics. As opposed to, this man over here found this atypical ant over here. This is a very weird atypical ant over here. So we know that we're talking about the atypical antipsychotics. Again, because we have the cot with ticks. So this is the atypical ant on the cot with ticks for atypical antipsychotics. And we can remember that these are the second generation ones because here is the younger man of the two. And parenthetically, the reason why they're called atypical is because they do not produce the typical side effects of the first generation antipsychotics, as we'll see soon. So in this scene, we're going to talk about the mechanism of action of the antipsychotics as well as the adverse effects. But let's begin by delineating what these antipsychotics are. And we're going to begin with typical antipsychotics. This man over here has this dog under the bed, and his dog, we can say, is being inhibited by the bed. This dog over here is going to remind us of D, and specifically D2. Typical antipsychotics work by blocking dopamine D2 receptors. And it is for this reason that typical antipsychotics could be used for diseases like schizophrenia, psychosis, bipolar disorder and delirium, Tourette syndrome, Huntington disease, and OCD. And this is because in these conditions, for example, schizophrenia, there's too much dopamine available. So by blocking the dopamine receptors, less dopamine will bind and less dopamine will be transmitted from neuron to neuron. What are the typical antipsychotics? We see over here, high up, these random characters over here. Since they're high up, they're going to remind us of the high potency typical antipsychotics. We note over here, this halo on top of the pear doll. The halo on the pear doll for haloperidol. Haloperidol is one of the most commonly used drugs for schizophrenia, but unfortunately it produces lots of side effects because it is a very strong dopamine receptor antagonist. Here we see another character. This character over here is actually a flute with genes. Maybe it's even a triangular flute with genes. So the flute with genes, or the triangular flute wearing the pair of genes, for trifluperazine or flufenazine. Both trifluperazine and flufenazine are typical antipsychotic drugs, which again are high potency. This means that they may have more neurologic side effects, which we'll talk about at the end. Then we see a few more characters over here. These characters are low. They're on the first floor, so these are the low potency ones. We see over here that there's a pair of genes that is giving a ride to this thigh. The thigh is going for a ride. Thigh going for a ride on genes for thyroidazine. This drug is not widely used because of its cardiac toxicities. We also see over here a very thick thigh. Thick thigh for thiothixine. But this one is no longer used, so we don't have to worry about it. And then we have over here this magazine of a claw. This is the claw magazine. Claw magazine for chlorpromazine. Chlorpromazine was actually the first antipsychotic discovered in 1952. In order to memorize the adverse effects, we have to take a look at the poster that this man likes to put on the side of his house. And lo and behold, it is a poster of he himself. Let's take a look. We note over here that he has these interesting lips. This reminds us of lipid soluble, that the typical antipsychotics are liposoluble and are therefore stored in body fat. They are therefore slow to be removed from the body. We also note the gynecomastia in this random picture, and this is caused by the hyperprolactinemia, which is the result of the dopamine antagonism, as dopamine antagonism leads to increased release of prolactin. We note on top of his head that it says QT. I guess he's a cutie, and he is a cutie. 
The prolonged cutesy letters over here remind us of the cutesy prolongation. He is munching on his cactus over here, which reminds us of the dry mouth, as well as constipation and other atropine anti-muscarinic-like effects. We note in this picture that he gained some weight, which reminds us of the weight gain, as well as dyslipidemia and hyperglycemia. We note that he is stepping on his blood pressure cuff, which reminds us of the hypotension, and specifically the orthostatic hypotension, which is a result of the alpha-1 blockade. He's about to collapse in his bed over here because he is so tired, as sedation is an antihistamine effect. Finally, we note this pyramid over here, or we'll call it this extra pyramid, since it's away from the man. This extra pyramid reminds us of the extra pyramidal symptoms. These extra pyramidal symptoms are primarily caused by the dopamine block, leading to Parkinson-like symptoms. And we can see a logo on this pyramid over here that says ADAPT, which reminds us of a mnemonic of the extra pyramidal symptoms. AD for acute dystonia, which includes muscle spasms, specifically in the face, neck, and back, stiffness, and oculogeric crisis. Treatment for this includes benzotropine and diphenhydramine. A is going to be for akathisia, restlessness, which is treated with beta blockers, benzotropine, and benzodiazepines. P is going to be for pseudoparkinsonism, or bradykinesia, which we treat with benzotropine and amantadine. And T is going to be for tardive dyskinesia, which we use atypical antipsychotics to treat, such as clozapine. Okay, now that we spoke about the typical antipsychotics, let's talk about the atypical antipsychotics. And that's represented by this side of the room, again, because we have that atypical ant on the bed over here. Atypical ant on the cot with ticks for atypical antipsychotics. Let's talk about how they work. So the thing with atypical antipsychotics is that it's not completely understood how they work. But the reason why we have this dog over here is again to remind us that most of them are D2 antagonists, just like the typical antipsychotics. But what makes atypical antipsychotics different is that they are also 5-HT2 antagonists, represented by Sarah over here with the toes against the bed. Sarah with the toes against the bed for serotonin. This reminds us that the atypical antipsychotics are also 5-HT2 antagonists. In fact, the second generation, the atypicals, prefer blocking serotonin receptors than blocking dopamine receptors. Let's talk about the different types of atypical antipsychotics. Well, the first thing we note is this random Arab shawl over here in the back. I, like, I guess he likes to keep his Arab shawl in his house. Arab shawl for Arapiprazole. By the way, aripiprazole is actually different, and that's the reason why it's separate from all the other ones that we're going to discuss. And that's because it's actually a partial D2 and H21 agonist. But again, it is an HT2 serotonin antagonist. We note over here a closet that is being urinated on by this dog. Closet P for clozapine. We also note that inside the closet, there is a picture of Orlando. And again, it's also being urinated on. Orlandopine for olanzopine. We also note that there is this random senator standing inside the closet. A senator P for acenapine. And finally, the question mark P for quetiapine. And then we note these drones over here. These are going to remind us of the atypical antipsychotics that end in done. We see the red parrot drone for resperidone. We see the very pale parrot on the drone for paliperidone. And we see the zebra on the drone for ziprasidone. Two that we did not mention here, but we can remember that they end in done, are iloperidone and luracidone. Before we talk about the adverse effects, let's just talk about the clinical use of atypical antipsychotics. They are used to treat schizophrenia, both positive and negative symptoms. They're also used for bipolar disorder, OCD, anxiety disorders, depression, mania, and Tourette syndrome. Now let's talk about the adverse effects. So again, this guy over here has a poster on his house of himself again. And we see that he is also a QT. The prolonged QT letters over here remind us of the prolonged QT. Now we don't have a pyramid here, just to remind us that the atypical antipsychotics have fewer extra pyramidal symptoms, as well as anticholinergic side effects. We note, we note that there are apines, the letter apines, coming out of his stomach. Perhaps we can say that the apines are making him obese. This reminds us that the atypical antipsychotics that end in apines could lead to weight gain, as well as diabetes and hyperlipidemia. We note that out of his breast is coming risperidone, which reminds us that risperidone can lead to gynecomastia. And this is because of the hyperprolactinemia effects which may include also, in women, amenorrhea and galactorrhea. We note that he is holding this crown over here. 
This Caesar crown, which reminds us of seizures, actually came out of the closet, reminding us of clozapine, as clozapine can cause seizures, as well as the white grain over here, which reminds us of agranulocytosis, another symptom seen with clozapine use. Okay, I hope you enjoyed this scene on the antipsychotics. Take care.